So are you thinking of installing Linux? Cool. But before you do, make sure you understand what you're actually doing. I've been seeing comments on my videos like, I installed Linux and all of my documents and photos were deleted. Or, why do I need to use a USB? And my personal favourite? All my files disappeared and my boss wants to know when you can get them back. So if you want to avoid the stress of losing your data, you need to understand a few things. Join me in this video as I explain what Linux actually is and what are the implications of installing it. The first thing that you need to understand is that Linux is not an app or piece of software to install with a double click, nor is it a system theme, it's an operating system. It might seem obvious, but do you actually know what an operating system is? Think about your current computer, take Windows for example. When you start your computer, before you interact with it at all, it loads the operating system, Windows in this case. It needs to do this before you can do anything, because without your operating system, you'd have no way to interact with your device. Without Windows, you'd start your computer, and it would just display an OS not found error. But say you do have Windows, that means that you're able to use your computer to do tasks like web browsing, email, games, but also storing files, documents, and media files. Your operating system gives you a way to interact with your computer to do these things. And when we think about Linux, which is a completely different operating system to Windows, you can imagine it can't simply be installed. Windows has to be removed so that Linux can take its place. And you can't remove Windows without removing your files, at least temporarily. Imagine you're doing a knockdown and rebuild of your house, but you want to keep the furniture. You'd put your furnishings in storage while you build the new house, and then move them back in once the new house is finished. Linux is not an app. Switching your Windows computer to Linux usually means erasing every last thing. We're putting the computer in that OS not found state, and you need to store your files somewhere else while you do that. Okay, so Linux isn't an app, but why do you need a blank USB to install it? Well, think about it. If you're erasing your whole computer, the files you need to install Linux need to go somewhere else. For most Linux distros, you download an ISO file from the distro website. This is a disk image file, and you write it to your USB when you download it. You can do that with a program like Belena Etcher or Win32 Disk Imager. And once you've done that, you instruct your computer to boot from the USB stick, usually by pressing one of the F keys to interrupt normal startup, into something called a live environment. The live environment is like a mini OS that allows you to interact with your computer without using your old OS. It contains tools and utilities that allow you to test your new OS before installing it. Most live environments have friendly install programs that walk you through erasing your computer's internal storage device to install Linux on it. I should mention, dual booting is also a thing. This is when you install two operating systems on your computer, and you have a choice of which one to use when you start it. The best way to do that is by using a separate storage device but some people will split up their main drive into two parts and install Linux on the second part, with the goal of keeping Windows and all their files intact on the other part. I don't recommend doing that at all. For inexperienced users who don't fully understand the concepts of disk partitioning and bootloaders, it usually ends in disaster. It doesn't always, but it's much easier to make mistakes when trying to dual boot using only one storage device. So, what's the best way to test Linux safely? I have two recommendations for you. The first, and most risk-free, is using a separate computer that you don't mind tinkering with. Maybe have an old laptop lying around that doesn't contain any important files. By installing Linux on a computer you're happy to experiment with, you can test it out and learn without worrying about data loss or ruining your main machine. The second thing I often suggest to new users is purchasing a second storage device for your main computer. Of course, if you're buying an internal drive, you'll need to make sure there's space in your machine, usually either a SATA or M.2 slot. Alternatively, you could also remove the drive containing Windows and replace it with a blank drive. That way, you can install Linux on your main machine without risking your Windows install. Physically removing your Windows drive is a great way to safeguard your files and avoid data loss. There's very little risk involved. But of course, if you do physically damage the drive or the connectors in your machine, you're gonna have a sad day. Either of these are good options, so have a think about whether you'd like to do a test like this before you go ahead and erase Windows. The other thing you could do is just test Linux in the installer's live environment or in a virtual machine on Windows. 
The live environment is okay, but it won't give you the full picture. Similarly with a virtual machine, it'll give you a decent idea, but it has limitations, especially when it comes to graphics performance and drivers. That was a lot, so what should you do? Don't worry, I'll keep it simple. But first let's have a look at PCBWay, this video sponsor. PCBWay is a one-stop shop for PCB prototyping, CNC machining, 3D printing, and more. The possibilities really are only limited by your imagination. So if you've got a geeky project that could benefit from using a high quality PCB maker or a cool 3D printed model, they've got you covered. Head onto the PCBWay website, upload your files and enter your specs for an instant quote. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video, which wouldn't be possible without their support. Right, so what should you do? Back up your files. That's the most important thing. Copy all of your important documents, photos, videos, and website login information to an external device or cloud storage provider. This way, no matter what you do to your main computer, the files that are most important to you will be safe. You should also make sure that you understand how to install Windows again if you end up hating Linux. Once you've taken these steps, you're free to start your Linux journey. Linux is great, and once you've set it up properly, you might find yourself wishing you'd switched sooner. Remember, curiosity is rewarded. That's why I often tell you to do things like Google it or do research instead of just straight up telling you the exact steps in order. With this kind of thing, it really is important that you ask the questions and look things up yourself. Me giving a step-by-step -step guide for a specific situation is not gonna help you in the long term. It just leads to doing something that you don't fully understand and then when a problem arises in the future, you're screwed. Curiosity is rewarded, so if you come up against issues or don't know how to do something, do some research. I also have a few other videos on my channel for Linux beginners, which include troubleshooting tips and some handy hints for new users. So make sure to check those out too. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.